at for today i would like to say thank you so much for being with me on my previous videos again this is Junli Iskala your nursing buddy helping the nurses of the future so for today we'll be discussing about chronic kidney disease which is still under your medical surgical nursing and adult health care so ito po ay this is the kalaban no this is in reverse naman sa ating pong previous discussion on your acute kidney injury because kapag acute kapatid kapag sinabi natin acute uh, basically when it comes to the duration of the disease when it comes to uh, how the onset happens or the the appearance of the manifestations happens so dito kapatid it's quite different no so kapag sinabi natin chronic kidney disease kapatid pag-usapan natin to so when we say chronic kidney disease this is the slow or irre irreversible okay the slow you need to take note of the word slow ibig sabihin kapatid uh, sa ating pong acute kidney injury that's abrupt and that's really really very quick um, mabilis pong nagde-develop ang ating disease due to certain series no uh, we just discussed earlier yung ating pong uh, pre-renal intrarenal and then post-renal causes of your acute kidney injury so dito naman kapatid kapag sinabi natin chronic kidney disease this is slow in nature Ito yung klarong pagkakaiba no, compared to our acute kidney injury. So, progressive, aside from that slow, it could also be progressive. And then, you, have, you need to take note of this word, irreversible loss in kidney function of the renal cell. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, because of a certain damage, because of certain occurrence, because of certain condition, Okay, it could be secondary cause, kapatid. Nagkaroon ng loss of kidney function ng ating renal cell. So, nagkaroon ng damage ang ating renal cell, hence, nagkaroon ng irreversible loss. And that's what we call as your chronic, which is very, very slow in nature or progressive in nature. So, kapatid, isa pang bagay na dapat nating maalala when we say chronic kidney disease, this disease usually requires dialysis. Okay? Unlike sa ating pong acute kidney uh, disease, or acute kidney infection or uh, injury uh, doesn't necessarily mean no, na kailangan natin ng dialysis but for your chronic kidney disease or CKD automatically because uh, dito there is a total loss or there there is a progressive and slowly progressive progressing loss of the kidney functions so just imagine no, yung apat po nating major functions of the kidney mawawala so what would happen to your kidney okay so usually requires dialysis to excrete sodium and water now what are the causes okay so may follow your acute kidney injury so alam natin yan so you have your pre-renal or yung lahat ng nangyari po before our kidney it can be a cause of your uh, CKD uh, intrarenal and as well as your post-renal but dito kapatid we need to remember that um, all of those causes na kasama po sa ating AKI can also be um can also be a cause of your uh, chronic kidney disease because your AKI may progress to your uh, chronic kidney disease. Now, another specific causes are your diabetes mellitus, hypertension kapatid, nahirapan no? Because of the too much pressure na meron po sa ating kidney, so it can also be a cause. Diabetes mellitus is actually the same. It's because what happens to our blood, it's very, very viscous. Just imagine you have a very viscous blood and because you have those small small um, blood vessels in your kidney nagkakaroon po ng damage dyan okay also with hypertension chronic urinary obstruction yon because of your calculi na matagal na po no uh, it could also lead to your um, chronic kidney disease recurrent infections yan so para po sa ating mga um, microorganism caused infections of the kidney renal artery occlusion also with your autoimmune disorders so we need to remember these things kapatid okay so now we have our stages of C ckd according to the glomerular filtration rate okay because gfr is a specific um indicator of your stages of ckd so depende po no that's why we need to take note of our glomerular filtration rate it's the amount of um it's the amount of uh, fluid or substances that's being excreted by our glomerulus or being processed by our glomerulus, which is the specific part now of our kidney. So, 
kapatid kapag more than 90 ml that's that puts our patient at risk no for uh, CKD so for our um 60 to 89 uh that's mild CKD uh so 30 to 59 that's moderate C CKD 15 to 29 that's severe CKD and now uh for 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 less than 15 ml so that's very very uh problematic now class okay so now this is what we call as the staging of CKD na kung saan kung mapapansin po natin as the type of CKD progresses to a more severe type so bumababa po ang glomerular filtration rate ng ating uh, kidney so anong ibig sabihin yan so the more that the CKD or the chronic kidney disease uh, the more severe it is so ibig sabihin the more na hindi nakakatrabaho ang ating kidney so ganun lang po ang problema Sa madaling sabi, pagdating po atin sa, sa ating chronic kidney disease, basically, nawalan ng function si kidney sa matagal na panahon. That, that's what happens here. Okay? So, these are the stages of your CKD. Okay? So, now what are the possible assessments na makikita natin sa ating pasyente na mayroong CKD? So, let's try to divide the concepts according to the body systems that we have. For your neuro, kapatid, nagkakaroon tayo dito ng asterexis, ataxia, Okay, or alteration in gait, myoclonus, or um, the mild, the more mild type of your seizures, lethargy, paresthesias, seizures, and also coma. So we need to remember these things. So all of these, kapatid, kung inyong mapapansin, ay may hyper and also meron din pong hypo. So asterixis, uh, ataxia, so basically those are abrupt and those are hyper type of your neuro assessments okay so the, just imagine no ang, ang pinaka ang pinaka landmark natin dito is your myoclonus and also your coma basically yan yung tinatanong palagi okay so for your cardio, cardiovascular assessments kapatid dito naman ang lalabas we have your cardiac tamponade we have your cardiomyopathy heart failure pericardial effusion pericardial friction rub, peripheral edema, uremic pericarditis. Kung inyo naman mapapansin kapatid, these cardiovascular assessments uh, contains or entails or includes your fluid. So sa cardiac tampo na danong nangyayari, basically na nalulunod po ang ating puso. It's because of the too much fluid. So dahil hindi na po nakaka-function na maigi si kidney, hindi niya na po nailalabas ang ating mga fluid, what will happen is you will retain more and more water, including your heart, or more and more fluid, including your heart, kapatid, malulunod din si puso. So, leading to your heart failure. Okay? So, kaya may pericardial effusion, pericardial friction rub, peripheral edema, it's because you are retaining more and more water. That's it, kapatid. Let's go to your respiratory assessments. So, kapag sinabi natin respiratory assessments, kapatid, still, this is related to your water or fluid retention. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng crackles dito, kapatid. It's because you are retaining more and more water. Okay? So, because you are retaining more and more water, uh, that's it, kapatid. Um, may kakaroon tayo ng uh, abnormal breathing sounds, such as your crackles. Deep sighing, yawning, depressed gog reflex, cosmos respiration, shortness of breath, takip niya, Plural effusion, still, because of your water. Uh, pulmonary edema, yan. So, that's what happens, kapatid, in your respiratory system kapag meron naman tayong chronic kidney disease. Now, let's go to your gastrointestinal assessments. Nagkakaroon ng anorexia, nausea and vomiting, changes in taste equity, constipation, diarrhea, and ito, this is very, very landmark. Nagkakaroon po tayo ng metallic taste, or we call that, we call that as the uh, dis this jusha okay so we call that this jusha nagkakaroon din kapatid tayo ng stomatitis uremic colitis gastritis and then urem uremic fetor so anong ibig sabihin nun ang ating pong uh, amoy ng ating pong uh, stula na, and then ang ating din pong pagutot ay there's something na kakaiba, kakaiba dito so we call that as a ure uremic fetor Okay, so another is urinary assessments. What are your urinary assessments here? When when it comes to your urine, your urine becomes diluted here. Okay, straw-colored urine or it becomes lighter urine. 
hematuria is possible also polyuria uh, nocturia uh, on early stages that's why we call it the uremic okay the the diuretic uh, phase yeah that's it and then oliguria or anuria on the later part okay so dito may also have your proteinuria okay which is now uh, very very uh, common okay in your chronic kidney disease so let's proceed to your integumentary because this has always been asked no in the board exam as well as your NCLEX so poor skin turgor kapatid bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng poor skin turgor yes there is um at, at, at earlier stage kapatid nagkakaroon tayo ng polyuria or nocturia so nadidehydrate po tayo hence nagkakaroon tayo ng poor skin turgor dry skin also and then nagkakaroon tayo ng bruises or what we call as your ecchymosis pruritus which is possible kapatid purpura soft tissue calcifications and also your uremic frost ang uremic frost po na ito kapatid this is already because of the accumulation of your wastes no basically ang uremic frost na ito it's like those um, snowflakes na very maliliit po siya na makikita po natin dito po sa uh, usually nakikita siya sa face sa, sa facial part and also in your head so it's like dandruff that's in the face parang ganun po uh, that's what we call as your uremic frost okay it's because of the accumulation of the bodily wastes such as your creatinine the accumulation also of your um, blood urea and nitrogen that's it okay so that's what we call as your uremic frost next is your musculoskeletal uh, assessments which includes bone bone pain uh, muscle weakness muscle cramping it's because of your electrolyte imbalances pathological fracture dahil isa sa mga functions po again ng ating pong um, kidney is the production of vitamin D which is essential also for the absorption of your calcium in your digestive tract so reproductive system naman what are your assessments there decreased fertility decreased libido impotence and frequent or absence of menses so basically these are our assessments na makikita po natin in our um, chronic kidney disease so what are your interventions kapatid basically you give everything that's given in your acute kidney injury you treat your patient according to the manifestation that's at hand and the most important management is to monitor the patient yan monitor the patient uh, in telemetry or in your ecg for hyperkalemia management ayan kapag makita na po natin yung hyper t yan that's also already indicating your uh, hyperkalemia of your patient prepare for dialysis yan prepare for dialysis manage your patient's fluid and electrolyte imbalances and also in managing pruritus so you need to remember that we must avoid soaps so what we must give is we must give prurite, anti pruritus to our patient or anti pruritic ointment anti pruritic agent or basically antihistamine so we give our patients uh, those agents okay so thank you caps maraming salamat for being with me in our discussion of your chronic kidney disease more and more videos are coming still under urinal and urinary problems maraming salamat po